My name is Nickel, O Nickel. And I'm Adam Korlick. And today we're going to show you guys five weird consoles. If you haven't checked out the other videos on this channel, like this one, or on Adam's channel, where he owns all these consoles and has done videos discussing all of them in greater detail. But now, let's jump into the first weird console. Apple Pippin. Released in 1995, this console was an effort by Apple to capture the home video game market. The console, however, was such a flop in North America and Europe that it was ultimately recalled. All units were sent to Japan in an effort to unload them. When Steve Jobs returned to Apple, the Pippin was one of the first projects that he axed. From a purely technological standpoint, it's the most powerful piece of hardware in the fifth video game generation, but as no one knows it exists, that title is often falsely awarded to the Nintendo 64. The Apple Pippin simply wasn't around long enough for anyone to even come close to utilizing its technological potential. In the end, the console only had around 80 games, almost all of which only being released in Japan. It's best known for a Power Rangers Zeo game, and a rather solid version of Marathon, one of Bungie's early games. Commodore Amiga CD32. Released in 1993, this console was intended to bring the Commodore into the home gaming market across the world. Commodore had seen incredible success with their home gaming PCs and wanted to consoleize them. The hardware was nearly identical and made porting extraordinarily easy. While the console saw moderate success in the UK and parts of Scandinavia, a legal complication prevented it from being released in the United States. This no doubt caused the system to be declared dead on arrival. By the time Commodore was able to settle matters, the the company was on the verge of bankruptcy. The North American version of the console was ultimately released in Canada only, and as a result is extremely rare and nearly impossible to find. Ultimately, almost no games were made exclusively for this game console, but because of its easy to use hardware and because it can read CDRs, there are new games ported to this console even to this day. Atari Jaguar CD. In an effort to boost the life of the Atari Jaguar, Atari made a last ditch effort with the Jaguar CD. The idea would be that it could benefit from the additional capabilities of CDs while helping to keep production costs down. By the time the add-on was ready for release, the Jaguar was already considered dead. In the end, only around 10,000 units are believed to have ever shipped out to the public. While it often gets a bad rap for being unreliable, this is generally not because of the hardware itself, but because of the finicky nature of the connection made between the Jaguar and the Jaguar CD. Often when placed on correctly, the units will function, provided of course you can find one. In the end, the platform only had 13 titles officially released. However, thanks to fan efforts, an independent game will be released on the console from time to time. Fans have even gone so far as to make new power cables that will power the Jaguar and Jaguar CD at the same time in an effort to only require one power supply. Sony PSX, aka that Japanese PS2 with a hard drive. Released in 2003, Sony attempted to make a digital video recorder, or DVR, for the mass markets. To push their device, they built a PlayStation 2 right into it. While great on paper, the device was not made by the usual PlayStation division, and ended up resulting in numerous hardware complications. The units themselves are notorious for not working. Couple that with its lavish price tag of around $750, it was destined to fail. The unit was never released outside Japan, and full support was discontinued in 2005. The most interesting part to come of this was the introduction of Sony's X Cross Media Bar, or XMB, which they would use in the PSP, PS3, and some Bravia TVs. Sega Wonder Mega. Released in 1992, Sega of Japan worked on a combination Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive, and the Sega CD, or Mega CD, unit. This attempt, of which there were many, allowed JVC to design the console. It featured S-Video Out, and it was the only iteration of the Genesis slash Mega Drive to do this natively. It also supported many karaoke features, as that was extremely popular at the time. In fact, one could argue that it was basically a karaoke device that happened to also support Sega Mega Drive and Mega CD games. The weirdest thing about it is that it had a motorized disc tray, making it the one and only console to ever do this. Ultimately, the console was far too expensive to produce. The original version supposedly only shipped a few thousand units before they went back and redesigned it into what we'd ultimately know to be the JVC XI, another obscure yet vastly more common version of the Sega Genesis slash Sega CD combination idea. The final fact is that pushing the like button might make something happen. It could be anything. If something did happen when you push the like button, let me know what it was down below in the comments. And as usual, I'll post some of the comments on Twitter. So definitely check out Twitter for some of the funny comments. My name is Nickel, O Nickel. 
And I'm Adam Korlick. If you want to check out the other games O'Nickel has been playing, you can do that right here. And don't forget, if you're interested in checking out more videos from Adam, like his video on the possibility of the NX using cartridges, then you can click right here. I want to give a big thanks to Adam for making this video possible. He personally owns all the consoles featured in this video, and is the one that gathered the information that you just heard. So definitely consider subscribing to his channel via the link in the description down below. I'll leave you guys with a preview of one of Adam's videos. If you want to see more, just click the video itself and it'll take you straight to his channel where you can subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Like glorified SD cards, that's not how that is. Now, so that's not making a comeback. However, the idea of physical media that is similar to say SD cards or flash drives, etc., that Nintendo might use in a home console, that I personally think has a lot of plausibility and merit and honestly, if they aren't thinking about that, fuck, they really should. It's a really good idea. So. I think that they probably are going to do something like that. I can't imagine that they'll do an all-digital console. I pray that they don't because I would not buy that. Uh, and I, I just can't see them sticking with discs either, and I'll elaborate as we go. <clears throat> but okay, so let's let's analyze a few things, shall we? First, I think if they do the do this, it will be kind of in the vein of like the way the 3DS does it. The 3DS's little cards, I'm going to call them cards, there's no 